Good afternoon, guys. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School, and welcome back to the Rope Clinic for part number seven. Before we get started today, do me a favor. Make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Make sure you've got all notifications checked, and make sure that you tell one of your buddies or two or three about my channel. All right, guys, let's get rocking. Okay, guys, we're going to cover a couple things in this Rope Clinic part seven today. Okay, guys, what we're going to cover today is shortening the length of a piece of rope or isolating an area of a piece of rope that could be damaged. And the first knot that we're gonna talk about can be used for both. We're gonna talk about improvements on that knot. And then we're also gonna talk about a couple other ways that you can isolate a small bad area of your rope so that you can still use the total length without cutting it off. Okay, so we're gonna take two bites in this line to create this sheep shank. If we're trying to isolate an area of the rope, we want that in the center. If we're trying to reduce length, we just take these bites and make them long enough to reduce the length to what we need. Now, once we're done with that, we're gonna tie our sheep shank. So we're gonna take an overhand turn in the line here, and we're going to put this side of the bite through that, giving ourselves enough room here that we've got plenty of loops sticking out. We're gonna to go to the other side, and we're gonna turn an overhand loop in the line, and do the same thing. Drop it through the overhand loop, and lock it down, making sure that we dress it to the point we have some stick out. So we have one loop going this direction, one loop going this direction. When we pull down on that, it's going to self lock and become a sheep shank. Now the problem with this sheep shank is that it can slip under heavy load, especially with nylon rope. So we need to figure out a couple ways that we can improve on this to make it better. Well, the first one is to use a Marlin spike hitch and take this loop and use it as a marlin spike hitch to pull the running or working end through and drop a toggle in there. Now there's no way this loop can collapse through because it's held fast by the marlin spike. And if we do the same thing on the other side with another marlin spike, in this case, we're just using tent stakes, then we eliminate the possibility of that loop pulling through and this knot slipping out. Now, if we don't have a toggle handy or something we can use to make a marlin spike hitch. What we can do is we can actually use the loop itself as a marlin spike hitch, tie a running knot in this end of the line, a collapsing running knot that is basically a marlin spike hitch, just like this, and drop that tail through the marlin spike hitch to become our marlin spike. Again, make sure that you've dressed it up enough to give yourself a little bit of leeway there and trapping it between there will hold that loop fast. And then if we go to the other side, we can do exactly the same thing. Come here, pull our loop through just like this, drop it through here, dress everything down, make sure that we've got these ropes dressed up as we go so that we have fairly equal lengths in the middle. When we pull down on that, we're going to collapse on those loops with that marlin spike. The last way you could secure this and make it safer, if this was a semi-permanent thing, is you could always seize this side of the loop to this running or working end of the line so that there's no way it could ever pull through because it's attached fast to this side of the line. Okay, so let's talk about isolating a bad spot in the rope that's fairly small and we don't want to tie a sheep shank to do that. What we can do is we can use this part of the line and we can create a loop in the line that's not going to degrade the line too much and keep this part isolated within that loop that we have no intention of using for block and tackle or anything like that. So one way to do that is with an alpine butterfly. So we just lay the line across our hand. We make sure that this loop is going to be what becomes our butterfly loop. So we pull all of this degraded line through and put that through the X so that all of that goes through and we dress down that alpine butterfly, the degraded or bad part of the line is now within that loop. The other thing you can do with this, if you're not well versed in knots, but you just know a few, most people understand a clove hitch. You can use a clove hitch to isolate a loop in this rope as well. Okay, I wanna to try to get a POV for you on this clove hitch method because we haven't covered the clove hitch yet because we haven't done hitches, that'll be part eight of this series, but some people already understand the clove hitch. So we've got a bad spot in the rope here. We're going to go on one side of that bad spot 
and turn an overhand loop. We're going to the other side of that bad spot and turn a second overhand loop. When we put those loops on top of each other and take the bad portion of our rope and put it through both of those loops, just like that, and dress everything down from both directions, we will basically have tied a clove hitch on a bite per se, and the bad portion of our rope will then be eliminated from our length. All right, guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School, and I appreciate you joining me out here today for another video and another part in our rope clinic series. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.